Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. We're on our way to a, uh, a job this morning. Our two jobs, main job today is a Ren kitchen that we'll be going on to. Um, but before we get to there, we have a, a quick job to do for one of the insurance companies we do work for. In terms of the Ren kitchen, we are going to be fitting, uh, doing a first fix today. So we get the first fix out the way. Plaster is going to be coming back towards the end of the week, it's Wednesday at the minute. Uh, so plaster are back towards the end of the week. Kitchen fit is going to start with a blank canvas on Monday. So hopefully it'll only be a couple of days. We'll be back into uh, fit the sockets and switches and now, stuff. So, uh, many of these kitchens and, and many kitchens we go to, uh, the client has paid an awful lot of money on a kitchen, which is uh, quite you know an attractive, stylish kitchen that they're putting in. Um, they don't want to be looking at loads of cooker switches and switches over the worktop so what we do we fit one switch one grid switch <coughs> with all the appliances on it all nicely marked up same style same make as a socket as the sockets in there and we'll put the um we will put the the grid switch next to the sockets and keep it we will keep it looking you know as, as nice and neat next to the sockets as uh, as we can now on this particular one, the client doesn't want the grid, grid switch. So what we're going to be doing on this one is fitting uh, sockets in the adjacent unit. So if we've got an appliance adjacent unit, we'll be fitting a socket in there. Uh, kitchen fitter will drill the plug tops through. Uh, it's something that we've done before on some kitchens uh, when clients don't want the grid switch above worktop height. Um, and yeah, we um, I say something we've done before, and the reason we do it is it's essentially doing the same thing as. Um, as a grid switch so we are putting the socket in the adjacent units if the client ever needs to isolate the appliance all they do they open the next cupboard along unplug the plug turn the plug off and the appliance is isolated so it does the same thing um, it's just a different way of doing it so we that's what we're going to be doing on this one so obviously we need the kitchen units to be fitted for us in order to put the sockets inside so um, we probably uh, a day next week we'll we'll get back and we'll we'll sort all that uh, also there's going to be chrome polished chrome sockets above so they're going for polished chrome white inserts on this one so they're going to be above wear top height. It's getting plastered, so the decorative fittings will react with wet plaster work. So we want to make sure that plaster works dry as well. Uh, so we'll be doing that when we come back as well, uh, just to make sure that that plaster works dry. So that'll be that. Uh, we'll get the first fix in today. I'll be fitting a fuse board tomorrow, probably. So might not get around to it today. Probably do the fuse board tomorrow, get some footage. Now we normally fit Hager, uh, we we'll, we fit Hager, full RCBO with um, SPD protection, so surge protection devices. Because if you're not fitting them, why aren't you fitting them? I just don't get it. I don't get this whole thing where people are trying to use calculations to get out of fitting it. I mean, if you actually look at that calculation, some of the values you've got to put in there, you're not going to be putting them in with any degree no. of accuracy. SPDs, if you're not fitting them, why, why aren't you, basically? Uh, even with it, we, we fit Hager boards, as I say, even with the Hager boards, the best part of £100. Uh, but we have been sampling some cheaper boards because there is clients who do need a cheaper job doing, so we will always try and work on specifications to get the price down, um, maybe put a lesser spec board in. Um, what we've been using for some time now is the Luden boards. Great board for the price, C cannot knock it, great board for the price. So we have been we've been fitting them, um, and we fit Hager whenever we can because they're our preferred go-to board. Now, the Luden the Luden SPDs, for example, they're not much. They 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 are not much. However, on this kitchen, we are going to be sampling. Uh, our wholesaler has gone. Has moved from our, our sort of main wholesaler has moved from Luden. They're now stocking Edis boards. So we're going to be chucking one of these edis boards in for two reasons one to give you guys a bit of a you know a fuse board review what i think of this edis board because i know you like it from looking at other videos online i know that you guys like um you know a good fuse board review so we'll be reviewing the edis board and see what it's all about 
whether it's going to knock Luton off our budget board spot, I don't know. We had a little look at it in the wholesalers. Uh, RC, RCBOs seem really good. There's, there's loads of space. It's in the back at the minute, but um, there's loads of space in the RCBOs, uh, in the terminals. They seem solid. Um, the enclosure, hopefully, is just the same as, as any other. It's not like <coughs> BG, hopefully, <laughs> where you can't get the cover back on the board. Um, so we'll have a little go at it. I'll, I'll give you a review. We'll probably be doing that tomorrow. Uh, SPD going it as well. Uh, so we'll um, we'll try and um, try and give you a good honest review of the board and see uh, see where we're at with the Edis board. But my point on that is, when I was looking at this Edis board, the SPD, so the surge protection device in the Edis board, thirty pounds. Now, thirty pounds. I I just don't. I don't get why people aren't fitting them. Why why aren't why are people still using the excuse of oh, my customer won't go for an SPD? If I had a customer that was um, haddling over thirty pounds on a fuse board change, when they know the value that an SPD is offering them, alarm bells would be ringing. I'd, I'm sorry, but alarm bells would be ringing. They really, really would. Um, so yeah, you know we're we're going to be fitting that tomorrow. <laughs> it's a cheap alter, a cheaper board, a cheaper alternative. So we'll be fitting that, seeing what it's all about. Will it not lewd off our, our cheap board spot? We only fit two boards. We fit Luden at the minute and we fit Hager. So Hager's our sort of premium one that we fit all the time. And Luden's what we fit when a customer says, look, Scott, can you fiddle with the spec and see if you can do it a little bit cheaper for us? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fit Luden. But whether Edis is going to knock that off the spot, I don't know. But we'll give it a good honest review, give it a good go tomorrow and see what we're thinking. Maybe include it in this video. Um, so we'll see where we're at with that one. And... Um, yeah, I'm going to crack on with the drive. I'm just going to get a coffee. Probably be back in a minute. Okay, so we're on our Ren kitchen. A uh, couple of sockets need changing over here. As you can see, there's there's quite a few cables running along this cover circuit. It's going to be, probably put that under the flexi duct underneath the kickboard. It's going into a larger unit here. So we'll sort that one out. Sockets getting changed over to chrome. This one's actually in the oven house one, so we're going to have to move this over a little bit. And see some... <sighs> nice, nice little connection. Same over here as well. So we're going to have to sort them out. We've got some under counter lighting going in, and also uh, we've got a socket going in over that side, round about here. Socket going underneath a, a unit here to do these two. And yeah, that's pretty much it for in the end. And then we've got the board to do tomorrow. So get cracking now, get a bit of a time lapse on. for day one so um just take you through what we've done over this side we've got light chase up these are going to come out below the the wall unit we're going to have a switch just underneath the wall unit uh, customer wants it so that when they walk through the door here they're just going to be able to switch it on a couple of runs of unit lights are going to run around there then um so as you're looking here we've got our hob socket down here with the um the hob's going to be sitting roughly above it Above it, we've got the extractor hood feed. Now, we haven't got any um, we haven't got any sockets on or anything because traditionally what normally happens is the joiner decides to bunk the units over a tiny bit and that has got to be blob on in the centre of that chimney in the extractor pan chimney. So we, we always leave that until the last minute. 
and then we'll um we we'll either put a patch through the socket on or we normally just put like um a way go um connector block on. So they go down and they go across and we've got all our feeds that are coming in to the top. So this is where the oven's gonna be and this is gonna be on the top of um in the actual upper oven cupboard, so the cupboard above the oven, and then we're gonna put a piece of trunking across the width of the unit. Um, couple of switches going to go in there along with our um, extractor rod switch and our hob switch as well. We're also going to have a few spare in there because we're going to take the under cabinet lights off the socket circuit just so that we're only altering one socket circuit, uh, one circuit in here. Um, so yeah, that's going to come off the socket circuit. We'll put an unswitched fuse spare next to it. Uh, the feed then runs over and goes over to our switch. And then what will happen from there, that will, um, that runs back over up to here where there's going to be a feed in here. It goes back down and up in this corner. So back down from here, up in this corner, and you can see the coil just up there. And then what we're going to do, save chasing in, because the customer doesn't want any unnecessary mess, although a lot of it's getting plastered anyway. Um, up here, we're going to be running this right the way across the top of the ceiling with a piece of trunking. And that's going to run over to here where we're going to tap into this box and then bring it down. There's going to be another wall unit there just next to this American fridge. So, um, yeah, it's going to come across there. Also, I'll just shove this out a minute. The customer doesn't want us. Oh, customer doesn't actually want us to change this. But we're gonna um, we're gonna get it changed over anyway because it's a bit unsafe. So get that changed. Um, yeah. Other than that, it's a good one for today. Catch you tomorrow. Okay, so you'll have to excuse the iPhone footage, uh, the mic on the GoPro, uh, we're getting one delivered. Uh, actually, it turns up today, so when I get home today, should all be in the house ready to go. Uh, basically, this is what we've we've done for the last uh, sort of hour. The um, All of our sort of isolation switches are up here in this top cupboard. Uh, the customer's going to use this as more of a, like a, a sort of cereal box sort of store so they're having those shelves near which is ideal uh, so we just run a piece of 2b2 trunking across um, we've got the hob ignition so that goes down to sockets that's going to be behind the drawer pack um, with the hob plugs into so isolation switch up here for that so the hob can be isolated easily uh, we've also got the extractor hood because the extractor is going to be 
up you know in the actual chimney itself of the kitchen extractor hood so we're going to be able to isolate that from here um oven so this one's only a 2.5 kilowatt oven but it's still on the six mil supply for future proofing so th there was um an initial six um six mil supply coming in so we've just extended that over to um over to this position here and we drop down in four mil flex down to the actual oven itself which is now in um, this is then going to be our um, under cabinet lighting. So under cabinet lighting, we're, we're doing it off the um, the socket circuit because to be fair, this house is uh, it's got quite a bit of DIY work on into it. So we just really want to be um, altering the one circuit. And as you can see up here, none of these lights are getting changed either, which are well, the the DIY at best. So um, so yeah, all, all we're doing there, we're taking our um, ring main going into the, um, the un unswitched spare. We're going to have a 3 amp fuse, as you can see there, we've put 3 amp max on the bottom. 3 amp fuse in here, um, and that will fuse the ring main down, drop it into 1 mil, or 1.5 we've used on this one. Uh, drop it down, that then heads over to uh, the far side of the kitchen. Uh, to the last wall unit where it will then pick up the first lot of lights uh, there's three breaks in the wall unit so there's a break where the extractor hood is so we've jumped the cables over which you can just see them coming out here this is going to be this wall unit here that's going to go under there that's just a, a, um, a temp cover on the original socket from the ring main just so that plaster didn't get a belt when he was messing about with it. Um, so yeah, that'll fuse that down and then it jumps over to the other side of the kitchen where there's another wall unit. So that'll be feeding the, um, the under cabinet lighting. Uh, customer just wants a switch, a little architrave switch underneath the wall units, just hardened, uh, hidden by the, um, the pelmet. And they're just gonna turn that on over by the door where the wall unit stops by the door. So yeah, um, cooker's all on, we've tested it out. So, turns on one little word of advice if you don't already do it always make sure all the plastics out of here this one's actually pretty good it doesn't have much plastic in it but um we've just left it in the cupboards above we've left the customer now uh, customers left us to it and um, obviously we're just checking that the oven the oven works well, that's the grill there we go so it, it isn't a it's only a single oven, so it's so, all um all working, all on, so all tested as I say. The um I'm gonna get a, a quick test. I always like to, even though we've checked out a turf before we've actually lifted this up. One thing I always do is I leave enough flex for, especially when they're in these oven housings, uh the large uh sort of larger units, I always leave enough flex. Uh, on the oven so that the oven can be lifted out and lifted onto the floor without having to you know mess around with the flex so yeah so that's all all done um but even though we know it's safe because we've, we've checked it from the floor before uh, i just like to make sure that this you know exposed metal work is actually earthed so all i do i just get um it's not a, a sort of a cord a test or anything i just make sure to plug it in to the nearest socket uh, swap the air over um, to my probe and just put the probe onto the um onto the actual metal work the exposed metal work of the cooker and just make sure that you know it's got an earth on that and the, you know the earth hasn't broken that broken down from within the appliance i suppose you could do a, uh, a pad test on it but it's just something quick i like to do before we ever leave it so i'm just going to do that quickly just to make sure um there's a light switch hanging off here that the uh plaster has left which as i say we weren't altering any of the light switches but um yeah he's he's left it exposed and it's a it's a flexible cable and as you can see the earth's being cut out of it as well so i can't in all good i can't sort of model i can't sort of leave that so i'm gonna quickly see if I can get an earth on that, tighten that up as well. Uh, he's also left a, a couple of sockets and switches off around the place. So you can see over there, there's, there's one he's left off over there. Uh, there's not, also another switch he's left off over there. So I'm going to, uh, going to tighten them up just before I leave. Um,
customers got the oven on. Th this kitchen should have we should have been back in here Wednesday. It's Friday now. It's bank holiday weekend. I'm actually off to Clam Ben Nevis, which I'm going to do a, a video of. Uh, so we're going up to Scotland. Me, the wife, and the brother and the Lord, and we're going to uh, Clam Ben Nevis over the weekend, over the bank holiday weekend. So I'll be back on this job on Tuesday just to um, finish off, put all the chrome switches on. Um, I'll I'm gonna extend the ring main in this socket, so the original ring mains in here, and our two new legs for the ring main coming up to feed this, and then out to our other points. Um, I'll I'll test that out, making sure we'll test the you know the ring out, making sure the our new legs of the ring are all tested and fine. I've already tested the um the existing ring when we were uh, when we come to first fix, so. Yeah, I've just had a call saying that um, it's an insurance job that uh, a company we work for are working on at the minute. The power's gone off and the alarm's ringing, so um, that's probably about a 20-minute drive away. It's 4 o'clock now on a Friday, so I'm going to pack up here, get them last couple of tests, and then I'm going to head down to um, see if I can get in to have a little look at this uh, alarm. Apparently, the lights have tripped, so... Uh, the lighting circuit tripped and the alarm must be wired off that so we go down and have a little look um might get some footage there depending on um how sort of harassed we are when we get there but yeah that's it for this one uh, for the time being anyway see you later state of that. Piles up the clout nails. Barry can double insulated.